As a young Christian in the early 1990s, I recall often saying, I wish God would speak to people today. In the Bible, I read where he called Moses and spoke to him directly regarding his call. I read where he called Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus and spoke to him directly so that there was no ambiguity regarding his specific call. Then I said, I just wish that God would speak to people today. I wish he would let us know beyond the shadow of a doubt what our life assignment was. I said, God, I want to know why you created me so that like the men and women I read about in your word, I could know the reason why you created me and then commit my life to fulfilling that assignment. Well, beginning in March of 1995, through a series of supernatural divine encounters, I began to hear the voice of God. This occurred over several weeks in that month. It wasn't a one-time thing. It was so supernatural, but yet so real, that it was really beyond comprehension. You see, when this happened, I was at a very low point in my life. I had recently finished my first year in the accounting profession at this large multinational firm. Even though I worked tirelessly, it wasn't reflected in the quality of my work. There were about 40 of us that started working with the firm just out of college. And when that year ended, I was ranked among the bottom three in performance of that group. It was at this point, reflecting on my entire life up to that point, and now my failures as a young accountant, that the Spirit of God intervened and set me on a path that has truly been an awe-inspiring journey. I began having nightly encounters with what, in retrospect, I can now undoubtedly say was the angel of the Lord. He showed me my past. He showed me my present. Then he showed me my future. He showed me that from the foundation of the earth, I was sanctified, set apart for a special work by God. He began to give me glimpses of what my life would be like, that he would use me to establish something that would touch many lives. In my human understanding, I quickly reverted to what I had always known. I'm a nobody who was never meant to do anything much. I told him, I think you may have gotten the wrong Walter's son. You must be looking for my older brother. You know, the one who is highly regarded. The one who everybody loves and respects. The one who everyone knew would be a success. You have come to the controversial one. The one with self-esteem issues. The one who is the least likely to succeed. Please leave me alone and go to my brother. So I resisted and gave my all trying to suppress what was going on down deep within me. But here's what happened. Whenever I was where the Spirit of God was, it was always there. So if I was in church or praying by myself, if I was in the car listening to Chuck Swindoll or Dr. Tony Evans, wherever I was, where the Spirit of the Lord was, it was there, it was tangible, and it was real. He showed me that he had put his word in my mouth, words that would liberate many people. He showed me standing in front of audiences of various sizes around the world, speaking words without stuttering, words that were not my own, and people being empowered and liberated as a result. This really scared me because I knew myself and the ton of baggage that I came with. But what I was seeing as I was caught up in the spiritual realm was so real 
that even with all my doubts, I knew I could not deny it. The King of Glory had revealed himself to me and was calling me to a greater work than I possibly could have ever imagined. <laughs> After weeks of resisting, I finally said, okay, okay, I will do it. Then I heard the voice of the Lord, the audible voice of the Lord say, whenever I open doors, I will give you the words to say and you do not need to be afraid. Immediately, he took away my stutter. Then he directed me to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, verses 11 and 12, where we read, The word of the Lord came to me. What do you see, Jeremiah? I see the branch of an almond tree, I replied. The Lord said to me, You have seen correctly, for I am watching my word to perform it. Then God said to me, What do you see, Roderick Walters? I said, I see the globe. He said, You have seen well. Then he said to me, What else do you see? I said, I see a bridge. He said, You have seen well, for I am watching my word to perform it. Then he said, The globe? That represents the world. I have given you a global ministry. Your work will take you around the world to further advance my kingdom. And here is the purpose of the bridge. My people may know my word, but too many of them do not know the power contained therein. I sent my word so that they can live and prosper in this life while they prepare for the life to come. I will take you and teach you how to teach my people how to bridge the gap between my word and their daily lives so that they will live in victory. This, Roderick Walters, is the work to which I have called you. You see, you think you're just an accountant. All you want is to turn around your accounting career and that's it. Well, I will not only make you a good accountant, but I will use you as an instrument that I use to account for the souls of men. I have made you a teacher and a preacher of my word. I have given you the gift of music. I will teach you how to play. And you see all those years where you stuttered and people mocked you and you felt sorry for yourself? You didn't realize it, but I was making a prolific writer out of you. You can't stutter on paper, can you? You see, I choose the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. I choose the despised and the rejected to show forth my glory. Do not seek validation from men because many will not understand this vision. Some will question your qualification. Some will question your motives and will never be able to reconcile the person they know you to be with the person who I have made you. So don't be discouraged because if you listen to my voice and obey, I will do this very thing that I am showing you. I have called you and will teach you what no man can. I will raise you up and touch lives all around the world through you, just like I am showing you this day. I will lead you to those whom I have chosen to speak life into your vision. I have chosen pastors and others to walk this journey with you, but always remain sensitive to my voice because I am the one who has called you and appointed you to these works that I have set in motion from the foundation of the world. I will make you a leader in my kingdom, one who hears my voice and obeys. I will raise up an army to walk this journey with you so you will not walk alone. Be strong and courageous. Hearken unto my voice and remain obedient because I surely will bring to pass these words that I am speaking to you now. In Philippians 1 verse 6, you will see that I have begun a good work in you 
and I'm faithful to complete it. At that point, like the Virgin Mary, I effectively said, Be it unto me according to thy word.